And there we are, we're here on the fabulous west coast, San Jose, California. Once again, it's a beautiful day today. I spent most of it inside getting ready for you to show up at my house so we could talk about all things costuming. Because I've been a costumer since, geez, I was making my own costumes for Halloween when I was a little kid. And then into other fandoms and all kinds of stuff. So I've been doing costuming for years and years and years. This is going to be awesome. I love costuming myself. And I got connected with this wonderful girl who turned me on to a lot of different costume things. And I got her to help me with uh, the arm wrestling at BabsCon. She was my narrator, if you want to call her that. But my, my lead person doing Sunset Shimmer. This is the fabulous Blue. Hello. Are you there? Fabulous. What? Are you laughing now? No. I choked on my tea. You choked on your tea because I, I gave you a really nice, beautiful intro. Yes. Thank you. You're it welcome. was beautiful. I'm that, crying. Are you so crying? Pretty. You're cr no, you're yes. crying because you're choking on tea. I know. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm doing good. How awesome. are you? I got, your, I got your fish face up here. You got my fish face? You fish, oh. you, with your, your wife who is garbage picture. Oh, no. Not that. Yes. It was, it's your, it's the cutest picture this. of you I could find. Cute. <laughs> cute Don't cute. you have me on Facebook? I, I'm sure you I could do. find a worse one. You know, I, no. I didn't find any worse one. This one's cute. That, everybody in the chat room, is this cute? This is awesome. It is. I can't see. It's, come, it, it's a 30-second delay, so you have to wait for it. Wait for oh, okay. Yeah, I know. We have a little bit. Of, it, it's, it's for the censors, you know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, anyway, Grant, glad to have you here. Awesome. We finally get a cosplay thing because cosplay is awesome. Um, tons of it has been happening in our fandom. Uh, other fandoms, anime, you know, comic book, this, it's taken over, you know, all kinds of stuff. It, it's so huge. Um, I love to do it. You love to do it. Let's do some talking about it. Um, but the first thing I'll ask you that I ask everybody who comes on the show. Um, what are some of the cartoons and comics you watched as a kid or are still watching uh, to this day? Uh, oh, cartoons and, and comics. comics. Yes. Okay. Well, <sighs> when I was really, really little, mm -hmm. Pokemon had just hit its initial boom in the United States, yes. and there was the original 150 and. Yeah all that jazz and man even then i was still about dressing up as characters if for a uh, halloween that year there were six pikachus in my class yikes i was in first grade and it was wonderful wow that's a lot of pikachu that's a lot of pikachu was there anything else that you watched during that time when um, you were younger well i wanted to watch sailor moon but at that time my mom was like they're fighting each other with sparkles that's bad and what? i said okay mom what? It's better than fighting each other with, like, automatic machine guns. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I don't know. I wasn't really into that. Okay. But, yeah, there was um, there was Sailor Moon. There was Pokemon. There was whatever was on, you know, yeah. for kids TV. <laughs> Gotta go fast, guys. Yes. Actually, I only watched Sonic because it was on, like, right after Yu-Gi-Oh! or something. And I was all about Seto Kaiba. He was so... Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, oh it, gosh, you, that's my. You case. see, gang, it wasn't. It's just not the guys doing it. Okay, who are crushing over characters. It's not. The girls crushed over the characters too. So. Mm. <laughs> Don't even tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So so of course we were just talking about that, but let's let's go a little deeper into what got you into costuming in the first place. Costuming or cosplay or, oh man, okay, there's lots yeah. of definitions we could talk about oh, yeah. here. I'm just going to answer your question. Do it. Um, actually, it was the acting because <gasps> I was never so much about costuming per mm -hmm. se as much as I was about wanting to act like the characters. Right. And so when I discovered that I could kind of, you know, joke my way through using a sewing machine. Okay. I could make more costumes so I could be more characters. Um, I've been in theater since I was like three. Okay. So it's always been a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. 
costuming. <laughs> okay, well, here, here's you and Chrissy. So here's your, here's your chrysalis right here, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I, I love the flowing gown gala thing of it. Right, oh. where a lot of a lot of people go with the, the holy stockings and things like that, where right, where, right, where you yeah. you gave Chrissy more of a, a elegant sort of take on who she is. Well, she is vain, very, very vain. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, and, and that uh, we'll have that that question a little later about different ways you can play the same character. Right, a lot of a lot of people can do this the, the same character. A lot of people do do oh. the same character, but they can do it in different Absolutely. ways. Right, mm -hmm. um, so. What keeps you involved in creating costumes and characters? I, I, I'm, I'm, we pretty much just answered it, right? So basically the whole, you know, bringing that character to life? Well, yes, that is part of it. I mean, I suppose it's that there's always new characters because I could bring all my favorite characters to life and be done with it, but suddenly new episodes and suddenly more shows and pretty colors and personalities and ooh. It's a deep dark hole, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Once you get going, as I'm sure Once you've you discovered. Going. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yes, because I, I just started my my little pony cosplay career. If you oh, want to call dear. it that. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about my <laughs> cosplay stuff in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, let's go a bit into history, cosplay. Okay, this is what I, I, I've researched today. Cosplay oh, fi finds its roots in actually science fiction conventions from the early teens to the 30s. Basically, people were dressing up as the robots and stuff back in the 30s going to world cons. Um, then that crossed over into Japanese fans and then was reappropriated by American fans again later. Um, now, we see um, a lot of very, quote-unquote, famous... Japanese cosplayers who are actually kind of making a living at this. Do you see that happening, ever happening here in the States? Uh, I don't know about a living. I think anybody who thinks that this hobby can become a living needs to stop, take a step back, yeah. and actually do the math. Because, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't. You can be very, very popular and actually make a decent amount of change from either selling prints, selling mm -hmm. your craft work, selling commissions, whatever. But a living, especially in a town like Seattle, yeah. no. Yeah. L.A. maybe. New York maybe. But uh, small town America, not really. Well, you could probably make a quote-unquote living out of it by starting in cosplay and being noticed by yeah. people who want to use, you, use your costuming, acting skills, whatever in the more professional industry of entertainment right. but cosplay itself i don't know yeah, no. yeah, <laughs> because we we do things like we spend ridiculously stupid amounts of money on things <laughs> as cosplayers oh, um no. and here is here's a nice picture of vinyl scratch that you did which where, one the one with the boom boxes sweet because that's arms. my favorite yes so this is the boom boxes that you actually built for mm -hmm. Babscon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which actually work. Dude, yeah, yeah they totally yes. actually work. I was very happy about that. I actually did not have the idea to do that. My wonderful, bestest, well, almost senpai. I don't know if senpai. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll call him my senpai. He can be my senpai. Yes. Um, uh, Jonathan Belskis, he... Some of you might know him as the... Vinyl Scratch fursuiter at mm -hmm. Everfree. He is totally awesome and needs way more credit. But he was the one who helped me through making those because, oh my gosh, can that guy make costumes and props mm -hmm. and stuff? I don't know. But yeah, they're pretty cool. They are, so. they are pretty cool. In fact, and if you, you don't see it in this picture, but on her back is actually a, a, a jukebox, which, yeah, which powers took, the, the booms. Right. It took a... Just a big boom box took off the speakers. What mm -hmm. you see in the a little white uh, cannons are yeah. the speakers. And on the back, it's just like a little controller from the 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, how about, you know, we were just talking about making of costume. Uh, how about giving the listeners some tips on basic 
cosplay. Let's call it the closet cosplay, as, as we want to call it. Um, things that you can put together easily from things you have around the house. Um, give them a couple ideas on things that they may have. What do you think? Okay. Well, first of all, um, I am an interesting cosplayer in the fact that most of my stuff can be described either as cos closet cosplay or whatever else cosplay is called, the not closet cosplay, because most of my costumes actually are, um, I have shirts, pants, skirts, materials, what have you, mm -hmm. and I alter them to become one whole thing. Like actually in this vinyl scratch picture you see here, yes. um, I everything was completely white actually, and I did the dye work on the jacket and um, the pants. Those are actually two pairs of pants that I cut apart, sewed together, mm. what have you. All that kind of stuff. There's actually more dye work down below on the pants, but you yes. can't see that on there. Um, those sunglasses were, they had purple lenses, but I had to paint them black because they were very shiny silver. Mm. So, um, though one of my cosplays, uh, my rarity actually, is completely 100% made from scratch, besides like the wig and the shoes. This one. Um, okay, well, as it loads. Yes. Yes. Um, that one, yeah, that one is completely, I could enter that in whatever that 90% made mm -hmm. thing. But, okay, honestly, there is nothing wrong with being a closet cosplayer. Mm -hmm. It is okay. Absolutely okay. And there are some people who are very, very snobby about, oh, you went to Goodwill to get your costume supplies. You noob. And uh, we don't need that. No, no, no we don't need that. Don't Not need at that. all. No. Because my my Commander Easy Glider, okay, mm -hmm. cosplay is one hundred percent bought from different things. But I had to figure out where to get these parts from, okay, mm -hmm. and where to get things made that weren't available. So if you take a look at say his hat, which I have right here, <laughs> this this hat, which is actually an airman's hat from the United States Air Force, but mm. To make it an officer's hat, it has to have the silver trim. Right. Right. I couldn't find one in my size, officer oh, style. Oh. So I bought the blue one, bought the silver cording from Joanne Fabrics, and glued it on. How oh, nice. Okay. And this badge here, which of course was not, is not available anywhere. I contacted Silver Slinger and had that and and commissioned him to make that, and with the rest of the jewelry also that I made for his um, costume, um, was all Silver Slinger. Uh, commissions. So these are the kind of things that you need to do to really make things, uh, if you can't find it, you have to make it or have someone who's better than you <laughs> make it. Like right. uh, I had no idea how to do the badge with the lightning bolt, right? And I just <laughs> said, hey, I need this. And he just came up with this beautiful design, which looks very nice on the tan uniform. Um, oh, absolutely. And uh, all the other little pieces. Um, the hardest part was the jacket, of course, because, you know, bomber jackets aren't just, you know, sitting on a shelf anymore. So mm -hmm. I ended up having to, to get a bomber jacket and then had both E the Pony do the big patch on the back. Yeah, let me get it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. So this is a regular bomber jacket you can buy on, say, Amazon. And the back patch is so big that I actually had to go to E the Pony because he's the only one who had a patch machine big enough to make this. Now I had to get permission from the artist who did the art and then went to E the Pony and had him commissioned, commissioned to do this and then had it sewn on the jacket. And all the rest of the small patches actually came from uh, Screwloose out of Florida. Well, he's not in Florida anymore actually. Um, and had those made by him, had them sewn on the jacket. Now the neatest part of this jacket, of course, is his name badge, which is pure military. It, it Velcros on and off like a military jacket. But there's a place online that you can order these. And looking through all of their designs, the wings of the Air Force of Taiwan has a sun in the center of the wings. So basically, when I found that, I was like, oh, that's perfect. And then just had Commander Easy Glider Wonderbolts put on it. And there you have a, a, a Command Wonderbolts bomber jacket. Now this jacket has more 
time, effort, and money into it than I really like to, to say. But it's <laughs> one of a kind. And, you know, yep. for, for my cosplay, it actually had to be done. It ne it, I needed this to make it look right. And yep. I, pff, everything else, I got it like an Army-Navy surplus store. Shoes, <laughs> uniform, everything else is basically, you know, your, your typical Air Force uh, BDUs of, of the, the era of World War II, which is what he was basically modeled on. So mm -hmm. uh, you have to start thinking. If, when you're doing a cosplay, you think about, through about, you know, eras and designs and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, there's that. But even more basically, let's let's scale it back a little because you're already kind of a yes. bit farther in your bit journey. bit further um, in that journey there. <laughs> when you start a cosplay, yeah. my for me, one of the most important things is color, actually. Okay. I yeah. am actually kind of picky about color when it comes to certain things. I'm not always picky about color. There are some things where the style is just perfect and I'm okay if it's a couple of shades darker or lighter, but you know, what are you gonna mm -hmm, do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or if I accidentally buy the wrong dye, oops. But you start with the character. You look at the character, look at the colors, pick the colors out and kind of, well, let's see. There's so many different ways to do it, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could take the large color and buy most of your clothes in that color or most of your items in that color. You could even start with your accent color. I really just start by seeing something and it just reminding me of a character. I was actually at Value Village the other day mm -hmm. looking for, I think, a tea set. But I saw this skirt hanging and it was beautiful and pink and flowy and wonderful mm -hmm. and I looked at it and said I need that for a Fluttershy and so now I've started a Fluttershy. Yeah. You've started Whoops. a Fluttershy. Yeah. Yep. And when that's I really yeah. how it starts. It's really yeah I was at there's this really wonderful store here in San Jose called Moon Zoom. All they do is 60s, 70s and 80s clothing. That's all they do. And I went in there looking for anything I could find for my macho cat Randy Savage cosplay for the arm wrestling. And I ended up with this really gaudy cute yellow jacket that's actually a Wilson suede and leather jacket from the 1980s, which this thing was probably a grand when it when it was sold in Wilson suede and leather and I got it for 25 bucks. Aw, yeah. 25 bucks for this. And it's pure leather. And all I had to do was put that on the back and put streamers <laughs> on it. And it's, oh, an, it's, so it's a wrestling it's a wrestling coat. And this whole jacket it probably has fifty bucks in it. And that's that's nope. that's cool. It, it, you go into the stores just looking for stuff. They had this wonderful um, hat, which was sort of like a disco rhyme sparkly thing, look all yep. rainbow dash. And I had my mind to do a a, a 70s disco rainbow dash. <laughs> I did, but then I'll go back and the hat's gone. I didn't buy it at the time because oh, I was a bad boy. Oh, I should have bought it. That feeling, though, you yes. see the perfect thing and go, I'm going to buy that can you tomorrow. Imagine, can you imagine me doing a roller disco rainbow dash? I would do something with you. Oh, yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I would love roller to do roller disco. disco. rainbow dash. I can see it. <gasps> oh, that yes. That would be awesome. I'd have to get some mm -hmm. quad skates, but I could do it. Oh, definitely. I need some quad skates. I know. Those are fun. Um, and, of course... Costumes are only limited by budget and creativity. We were just talking about that. Um, <laughs> in fact, I'm going to show you something I found online. Oh, my God. And I actually, I have it cosplay expensive is what I called it. This thing. Oh, my God. This is what? like a, she's a, a mermaid with this huge headdress and a, 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 a cane thing and flowing hair and a freaking piece of coral she's sitting on. And oh, my God. The heck is this thing? <laughs> that had to be five thousand dollars if it was anything, maybe more. <laughs> Holy! But but again, it's like you're limited by your creativity and your cost. So you can do just about anything. Um, now, when you start out, we were just talking about. You said you start with color, right? So once you get the color, what do you do? Do you do you draw it out? Do you have it in your mind? Do you just start looking for parts? How do you go about? Well, it? actually. I'm going to take a couple of steps back there because you touched on something really important. Um, I actually think 
and this is another thing that I absorbed from Mr. Belskis. Um, there are three main resources that you have as a cosplayer. Yes. You have time, mm -hmm. you have money, mm -hmm. and you have your body. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people forget the third one. Yes. And don't get me wrong. It's okay to cosplay if you're fat, skinny, yeah. tall, short, a potato. Yes. Dude, you're going to make the best cute potato in the world if you have the right attitude. Yes. But... A lot of people forget that body is a resource that they can use to become a character. Absolutely. And so these three resources, well, first of all, you shouldn't go into debt on any one of them, meaning, you know, no. don't go into debt in your money. Yeah. You only have 24 hours in a day and right. please don't kill yourself. Yes. But taking into account these three resources, I will usually start planning my cosplay by Whatever's in my bank account, how close the con is, and do I feel good about myself today? Hmm, I think so. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So, usually, I'll start with a character, and as I said, I started with color. Mm -hmm. I also will start with wig, usually. I usually start with wigs. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but most of the time, I'm looking through Arda Wigs, Epic Cosplay, Deluxe, Rockstar, yeah. um, eBay can be hit or miss. I've had luck with it so far. Mm -hmm. I usually get them shipped from China, but dang, does that take a long time. It does. Um, there's a new wig shop opening up in Canada called Mithra Wigs. Um, you know, there's wigs mm -hmm. everywhere, but the color, the style, and how well it's kept mm -hmm in my opinion, determines about 60% of your cosplay because people look at your face. Mm -hmm. People look at your hair. It stands out whether you want it to or not. You can have a fantastic costume, but if your wig looks like a bird's nest or the Paris Sprite's got to it, yeah. you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Like I, so, I picked up this, uh, this picture, which is a beautiful raven, which I believe was mm -hmm. at uh, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, and mm -hmm. look at the, at the color of the of the the wig which is a mm. beautiful raven purple um oh, yeah. which works with the blue cape now if the, if the cape was lighter or darker it wouldn't work with the color and on top of the, look at the the the, t the skin tone makeup ah, that was okay. that was picked up it all works perfectly and this was very thought out in color sense oh, so yes. and this is what this is what blue's been talking about indubitably <laughs> so again, yeah basically yes i start with the wig and then, or, and you don't have to start with the wig. You could start with arm warmers, mm -hmm. shoes. I don't care. You see something, it inspires you. Just go for it. But I will then take that piece and either bring it along with me if I can't really remember the color. Like, right. oh, for instance, by Sunset Shimmer, um, I did make the skirt myself. So mm -hmm. I brought the shirt with me to the craft store and held up the shirt to all of the fabrics because there was one fabric that matched perfectly, but it didn't quite match with my shirt. Right. So rather than trying to match it to the hex code color of the picture of Sunset Shimmer, I decided to match it to the shirt and I think that made it turn out a whole lot better. Oh yeah, and, and like this picture here, which I've just put up, which is a, a, a Raven from the 1990s X-Men comic, which is yellow and green everywhere, except for the <laughs> hair, which is a Ravenly red color. But the jacket that was picked was a perfect color for that hair. If that if that jacket was too light or too dark, it would completely ruin that entire look. And uh, again, we're talking about color sense um, yes. and what's going on there. So yeah, these are a couple I was picking out for. And the just, other thing too about perfect. color. Yes. The other thing too is it's always good to ask a second opinion, especially when you're not sure. Mm, I am frequently taking pictures and sending them to my yes. friends, like, does this look right? Yes. Is this a good color? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, th there's so many things out there now. In fact, they have cosplay.com, which has, is a place where you put up your cosplay pictures, a forum. Oh, that's been there forever. That's been there forever. I didn't know about it until today. Oh, I didn't know about wow. it at all. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? And and they now have a cosplay magazine, which I saw on the magazine rack like last week in my local Safe Mart. Oh. I was like, wow, that's at Safe Mart. It's, it's a cosplay magazine in Safe Mart in San Jose, what? California. Yes. Wow. Cool. Crazy. So it, it's it's everywhere. If, you, if you're looking for something, if you're looking for help, if you're looking for information on cosplay, it's everywhere. 
Just Google it. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. Um, <laughs> um, in recent years, I'm, I'm going to bring this up. And mm-hmm. it's, it's something that has been going on and going around um, oh. for a couple of years with cosplay now. Um, mm-hmm. The Comics Old Boys Club, the comic, the old, the old guys, the, the artists, the writers, they're basically not liking cosplay. They basically ah. said, you know, it's not helping the industry or the comics market in any way. Don't, you know, don't ask me to your show if you're going to bring in a bunch of cosplay. Yeah, you know, that's right. I'm, I want to know what your view on this kind of malarkey is. I know what mine is, but let's hear what you've got to say about it. Well, <laughs> you know, I honestly, I see both sides to the story. I have been working on... Um, artist alley tables since I was in seventh grade Mm -hmm. actually because of school programs and it was pretty rad but and so I've been on both sides of the table all three sides four sides I don't know on top of it but one of the things that people get pissed off about is that the cosplayers block their table the cosplayers take attention away from them the cosplayers are getting all the attendees attention and suddenly the market for people going to these conventions to sell their goods, to sell their wares, their art, their writing, what have you, their famousness, I don't know. Right. It's becoming harder to do the old traditional way. Oh, yeah. Now, the thing about this is things change. Yes. And yeah, if it's not for the better, this will explode and then probably go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. Or it'll just explode the end and we'll move on to the next thing in this strange big world of ours. But more than likely, because this is a trend that is picking up in several different fandoms, several different everything everywhere, it's changing in this direction. And rather than complaining about it, Mm -hmm. as some people do, the smart thing for their business would be to adapt to this Mm -hmm. and either utilize the cosplayers as help to draw people in, asking them politely to move to the side of the aisle or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are people who just, I don't know if they can't see it, don't like it, are indignant, whatever, Mm -hmm. and... That's the way everything is, though. I've seen it a lot, especially in our fandom right now. There is a big change going on, and some people like it, and they're really excited for it, and other people don't. And they've got words to say. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got words to say. So I'm kind of neutral on the whole thing. Um, I do think that they should, uh, you know, work with them, because that includes everybody. I also think it's kind of weird when, like, you know... Actually, I don't know. I do think it's a little weird to have cosplayers as guests with tables in Artist Alley and standing there, but I guess that also makes sense because people want to find them, Mm -hmm. and, well, if you're somebody hyper and bouncing off the walls like me, nobody ever finds me because as soon as I'm in one place, I'm in three different others at the same time. So, I don't know. It's it's very new. It's very wobbly, Mm -hmm. but... I think we'll get there eventually. I'm, eventually. I'm, eventually. My, my whole opinion is it's more people, more fun. Yeah. And don't be shutting out people because it's not the way it was back in the 1970s. Okay? Yeah, because, absolutely. Because comic books aren't the way they were in the 1970s. And if you, oh, aren't, so going, true. If you aren't going to adapt, you're going to die. And that's yeah, just the way it is, boys. That's literally it. Adapt if, or die. If, if, you are, if you can't adapt to the changing marketplace, stop. Because go ahead, write your comics or draw your comics and stay in New York or stay in L.A. or wherever the heck you are and don't go to the comic book conventions and don't have any fun. Because guess what? This is all supposed to be fun. And Everyone's having a good time. If you want to be a stick in the mud, don't care about you. Well, you're going to get left behind because this river's a moving. And did you know that comics are kind of going online now? That's where the big market is nowadays. That's where the big market is, yes. I love drawn comics. Don't get me wrong. I grew up with drawn comics. I love drawn comic art. I have it on my me wall. Me too. But I love commissioning artists. I, but you know, sooner or later, it's all going to be online, and things are changing. So if you can't change with the flow, 
You know, yep. I don't like you guys who think that it's all going to be the old school and you're ruining my fandom and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Shut up. Um, okay. When, now, here's, here's a question about, you know, we're running a little long on this, but I got plenty to say about it. Um, <laughs> when you're out on a floor, right, say oh, at, yes. at a bigger convention, and you're in okay. costume and you're in character. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Would you say that having a handler to control crowd, control photography, all that stuff would be beneficial to a bigger character than, say, just walking around and, and getting in the way of everything. Okay. If you are having trouble crossing from one side of the room to the other yes. within probably about the same speed as everyone else, you probably need somebody to help you. When I had my base cannon on, mm -hmm. I had someone with me almost all the time because I couldn't do things with my hands. Right. That was a little bit of technical oversight there. Mm -hmm. And I was also on rollerblades. Oh so my. having rollerblades and scra uh, scooting around the convention floor, I need somebody with me to make sure I'm still okay and other people are still okay yes. because it's not your average walking. There was this guy who I think won the costume contest at Babs, yeah. who was enormous and oh my gosh, Huge. it was so cool. But he couldn't go anywhere. At least twice, three times the size that I am. Just yeah. enormous, like big mecha thing. I think he but had he like could two not handlers. Go anywhere. Yeah, he had two handlers and he needed them. Yeah. And sometimes, and it doesn't always have to be size that needs a handler. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people and their personalities and they love to cosplay but they're very poor at handling people and telling people no i'm sorry i have to be at a panel can i please leave yeah. um and they'll get stuck taking yeah. pictures with people those people also it would be good to have a handler just yeah. so they can get places i'm time. loud and abrasive and i usually don't need one but you know whatever sometimes yeah. it's nice okay so let's uh talk about Okay, if there was a character, if there was one character that you would want to cosplay, mm. who would it be and where? I really want to do a humanized, I guess, R63, which Rule 63, if you don't know, means gender swapped, um, of King Boo, actually. Oh. Because I love spooky ghosties spooky like ghosties. gengar is one of my favorites and boo is ah. anyway um i'd really like to do like a huge big white ball gown and little mm -hmm. fangs and like a crown and stuff because i also love crowns too so yes. that is something that i would really like to do eventually but i only want to do it when i know i can do it justice right well that's like the same thing about commander easy ladder I know, I, mm -hmm. I know time was ticking, but I wanted to do it right. And, right. and you it took did me it a right. long time to do it right, and I wasn't going to show him until it was right. So, right, absolutely. absolutely. And the other thing, too, is even if you finish something mm -hmm. or quote unquote finish something, you can always oh, yeah. make improvements, do it again, mm -hmm. do something new. I think I've done vinyl scratch. That's my third time that I've done vinyl scratch. It's my favorite so far. Yeah. But, you know, there's always room for improvements you never really stop yeah. and, and that's that's um, i was going to bring this up um there are different ways to cosplay the same character people so if if you see somebody doing rainbow dash mm -hmm. and you say well that's really cool i could never do that well you can do that because well, not, you know, with that attitude. not with that attitude you won't because <laughs> a lot of people do rainbow dash in her gala dress like this one right here which i think is the, the best rainbow dash gala dress i've ever seen oh, which is beautiful wow. letter, 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 letter. but but people also do Rainbow Dash as a sporty jock, right? Oh, yeah. With, with the Letterman jacket and the big poofy mm -hmm. hair and, and all this. Rainbow Dash has a lot of different sides to her character. So you could do a different form of rarity, a different Fluttershy, a different Soren, a different Brayburn, whoever. Because now we've seen a lot of different sides to all these characters. And you don't have to oh, just yeah. stick to one, what you would call, aspect of a right. character yeah. like going back to rainbow dash yeah heck if i wanted to do something really quote unquote unique mm -hmm. something that i don't think i've seen yet is a 
bookworm Rainbow Dash. But yeah. we all know she's into books. We all know that she's reading. Really cool. But, you know, I'd like some, to if it. somebody walked around with Rainbow Dash's hair up in a ponytail and reading glasses and actually do do a Twilight Sparkle version of Rainbow Dash, that would be awesome. Just change <laughs> Rainbow Dash into, like, a... Noted. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. My phone's going off right now, but that'll be a little later. But, uh, yeah, so there's different ways to do all this stuff, right? In fact, I just came up with one which was Ro Roller Disco Rainbow Dash from the 70s. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be cool? Anything would be cool if you do it right Anything with the right cool attitude. Anything would be if you do it with the right attitude, right? Yeah, so you absolutely. Sit, you sit down with ideas and you do this stuff. So it's now 5.37. We ran a little bit over with a question and answer, so we're going to go straight into talking about convention season which is full swing which is places all these places oh gosh. all uh, these places uh, uh, that you can I, go cosplay all these places i leave for a flight on thursday thursday uh, as a matter of fact um first one that's uh coming up now is midwest brony fest yeah kansas kansas gonna be so Everland fun Park, kansas may 22nd to 24th guests are andrew libman kazumi evans black griffin michelle kreber monique kreber and a mess of community community guests including this one right here um, um, Everfree Northwest, of course, is in two weeks. Last That's the week next of the month. One. That's the last one. May mm -hmm. 29th, 31st, Sedaddle. Guests, big guests are Larson hey. himself. That's my hometown. Larson, Kelly Sheridan, Thiessen, Big Jim, Ingrid Nelson, Lee Tokar, which we haven't seen in a while. Lee's coming back. John, uh, Mr. Delance, mm -hmm. Nicole oh. Oliver, <laughs> Tabitha, Bonnie, Lazar how do you say your last name? Zach? Yeah, Zachary, heck if I know. I think. Sure. But, hey, you know what? She's the person who created our entire freaking universe. Way yeah. back in the day. My I pretty think pony. That's so cool. Okay. I I'm look I'm more excited to meet her than just about anybody. It's but, true. Absolutely. Um, so and a wonderful smattering of community guests, including myself, I'll be there. Um, There's a lot. Absolutely a lot of people. And then of course uh, MLP MSP, uh, June twelfth to fourteenth in Winneapolis, Winnie Soda. <laughs> um, and that is uh, Kathy Westlock, Ingrid again, Tabitha again, Larson again, all the Creepers, Black Griffin, AC Race Best, and Saber Spark will be there. So you can complain to them about why you're not in a React. Don't complain to me. Um, <laughs> Grand Brony Gala, I mean, uh, listen to all these that are coming up. Grand Brony Gala, TrotCon, Crystal Mountain Pony Con, Pony, Pony South in France, Great Whoa. British Pony Brony Convention in England. <laughs> Galicon in Germany, Chequestria, guess where that one is, mm. Brony Can, oh, right yeah. there in the heart of Vancouver, and so many more are all coming. Did you even say BronyCon? No, because you know what? BronyCon's <laughs> coming up too. Everybody knows about BronyCon. <laughs> That's true. Everybody, Everybody knows about, Bro knows I don't about have to talk BronyCon. About that. <laughs> well, guess They're what? Gonna I'm going to be but, at BronyCon yes. and BronyCan. It's yes. going to be fun. I'll be at BronyCon. I won't Good. be at BronyCan, I'm sorry, but BronyCon, I'll be there. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's all, good. At least gonna be, one more. It's going to be off the chain, guys. Off the chain. So, so great. So great. Go out there. Create a costume. Do anything. Just go out there and have a great time. And Plenty you know what? The pony up this summer. You know what? It doesn't even have to be super duper no, spectacular. It doesn't have to be any of this. It doesn't have to be any of this stuff. I mean, hey. I do this because yeah. I want to beat every single costume that I do. I want to continually yeah. get better. But I've been doing this for like two or three years now. So, wow, it's I don't even want to bring out the very first costume I ever made. Because it's ugly. <laughs> oh, my God. My very but, first costume but I is have it. I have it because my mom made it with me. And I will never get oh, rid of it. Oh, that's so ever. sweet. Ever. <laughs> so, yes. But I have it. It's uglier than mm -hmm. sin. But I, I still have it. I made it from a, I get this, I made it from a bathrobe and about three yards of white fur and a pattern what? for Bugs Bunny. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Crazy. I'll, I'll tell that story later. But okay. we go now into charity work. It's charity oh, yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So, last charity was for Kelly. Kelly's charity was the Wildlife Rescue Association of British Columbia. We did a wonderful job. We beat our $500 goal. Everything's cool. We did it again. Awesome. You guys are awesome. You are. And I have some names down here, which were cut out for me by one beautiful Guns, because I'm an idiot and I forgot today. So Guns got me out of the stew. And here's actually my Macho Man hat right there, which is basically a hat I found. Actually, you know where I got this hat? I got this hat at Las Vegas' Unicon. I did. On the Las Vegas Strip. 
<laughs> and of course, I just put the Randy Macho Man Savage thing on the front, and it's a Macho Man hat. It's, easy. it's that easy. You see how easy that is? So, for the wildlife, we have all kinds of really great stuff. In fact, you know, I should show you what the heck I'm giving away first. I'm getting out of, out of sync again. Why? Because Dusty's that way. Okay, so we're giving away this stuff over here. So we got a Heather Neufer comic signed. This one, this one is the, the artist proof, so you can have her draw something on there sometime. Uh, we have a fashion style Pinkie Pie right there. And we have a Trixie Luna Moon Funko. Love Funko. They, they're they going to have new t-shirts coming out. I got to have those. Those are awesome. <laughs> um, and of course, the uh, Twilight Spirit. Sparkle Secret Ship Fic Folders, mine and the ones from BabsCon, so those will be going in the pot pile. And because we broke 500 beans, this beautiful Silver Slinger Necklace of Equality. Ooh. Right there. Whoa. Yes, oh. so that whole pile of stuff goes to the person I draw out of this hat. Mix, 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 mix. This one. This is, is Michael Cole, Mr. Michael Cole. You win today. So, today if you are here, you send me an email at manliestbrony.com, dusty at manliestbrony.com, and we'll get all that stuff mailed out to you. You Thank won the thing. You won the thing. It's a place. Thank you very much. I'll get all that out of the way. Now, for blue. Ooh, what? Yes, we're going to do Second Harvest Food Bank. Ah, oh, Second yeah. Harvest Food Bank. You know why? Because food banks need help even when it's not Hearth Swarming Eve. It's true. Most people think, oh, I'll just do all my stuff during Hearth Swarming Eve. That's when they need it. No. They need it now. They get all they get everything they need in, mm -hmm. in the holiday time. Now is when they need it. Because right. everybody just goes, Oh yeah, they only need their No, they need it now. So we're gonna do another one for Second Harvest Food Bank, one of our favorites. Um, so with that, I got this stuff over here. Um, again, another set of Twilight Sparkle Secret Chip Fit Folder Cards, the BronyCon, or BabsCon, excuse me, and mine. Those will go in the pile. Um, I have a Japan PonyCon gift set, which is the calendar, which is a tea towel, the <gasps> breakdown chopsticks, and a lanyard right there. So I want them. That. Also... <laughs> A beautiful lunchbox. Oh. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic lunchbox brought to us by who? Our sponsor, Little's Toy Company. Right yeah. there. So, but not only do you get this, you get what's in this box. So let me pop this top here. Mm, what's in the box? Yeah. Look at all this stuff. You get a set of playing cards. You get this play Fluttershy play pack. You get a mini Fluttershy. You get oh, a an LCD watch. So you cool. get a Fluttershy blind bag box thing. Black. The, you get oh. a Rainbow Dash air freshener for your car. Huh. Oh, and, I have one of those. And you get a Applejack collectible card game from Ent from Enderplay. All that cool. stuff. All that stuff is in this box, which will go to the lucky winner next week. So yeah. you go over to manliesbrony.com and you click on the link and you go over and you give us anything. Anything $5 or more, you're in the drawing for this great big pile of stuff. But that's not only it. You know, that's, that's just the stuff if you give us anything, right? Anything at all. Now, as I put this away, <laughs> if we break 500 bones, if we break 500 bones, we're going to do two things. One, Blue, I believe. Yes, that's yes. me. Yes, I believe I can get her to send you some tea. Oh, yes, tea. Okay. All the favorite tea. All the favorite tea. So much tea. And brewing instructions. And brewing because instructions. did you know, did you know that you're only supposed to brew green tea for like 20 seconds if it's like a nice sized pot? You yeah. don't brew it for three minutes. That's no. not right. Not right. There are many ways to brew tea. Yes. The Japanese many. know 3,500 ways to brew tea. But, yes. So, I'm going to get Blue yes. to send you some tea if yes. we break 500 bills. But not only that, if we break $500. I found some of these. What did you find? I found My <gasps> Little Pony comic. This is the artist proof, Andy Price artist proof cover. Very rare. This is from number 13, which is the pirate cover. 
What? And I had it signed by Andy Price. Nice. Signed, signed rare comic from Andy Price. Also for five hundred bucks. So cool. that pile will go next show. So go over to manlyfromery.com, click on the link, give a couple bucks to Second Harvest Food Bank, please, please, please. Tea. Because you never know when you might need that help. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. true. Blue so, says it's true. Blue says it's true. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So that <laughs> is charity for the week. Thank you very much, everybody, for giving us a hand. And we, we, we love you guys for helping us every time. We, we are like, we're not going to hit 100 grand this year, but dang it, we're going to get dang close. We need to meet some some jumps up there, but we're going to do that. Uh, let's see, and we are now at... We need to find Screwball. Hey, Blue, call for Screwball. Okay. He's lost. Huh? Where did he go? Where did he go? I don't know. He's somewhere. Don't know. Screwball! Oh! There he is. Screwball! Why did you lost. leave me? I, I, I did was not, so scared. I did not leave you. I'm just very quiet. I'm like an he assassin. Just he's, he's like an assassin. Stalking well, the well, shit. He's like Assassin's so- Creed. Yes. Don't kill me, please. Uh, no, I would never do such no. a thing. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> yes. So that is yes. uh, that is the screwball. Hey, Screwy, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. It's hey, roasting hey, in my apartment. A little stinky. Really... Oh boy. Well, no, because when I when I was hanging with uh, Sibzy and Andy and Sam, we yeah. went to this candle store. Oh. And we and uh, we got uh, a bunch of really nice scented candles. I'm currently holding one as. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Now, now I have a candle fiend on my on my thing. Oh, one thing before we go forward, I want to talk about um, the last charity. A few people didn't get back to me on our 100th show charity. Okay, I need to hear from Nathan Kraft, Leon Chen, Waveform, and Mini Applejack. I need to hear from you guys so I can send you out your prizes. Okay? So, Dusty at ManlySpermary.com. Thank you. Um, okay, go for it. Ooh, okay, uh... So all this heat's making me tired. <laughs> um, so wakey, this is wakey. from yeah, I'm trying my best. Uh, this is from Pink Pearl Apple uh, to you, Blue. Um, how do you find your wigs? That's the hardest part for me when I cosplay finding one that doesn't look homemade. Finding wigs. Okay. I well, first of all, it depends on how much money I have. Because <laughs> if I have a lot of money or a fair amount. For instance, uh, my Pinkie Pie wig, which is one of my favorite wigs ever. Mm-hmm. It cost $350. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of money. But I looked all over and I scoured eBay, I scoured Art of Wigs, Epic Cosplay, all of my resources until I finally stumbled across that on Etsy. Woo. And who boy, did it hit my bank hard, but Man, is that still one of my favorite wigs to date. It and is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, it's big. It's huge. It's wonderful. Um, I'll bring it with me somewhere, I'm sure. Yes. But if I don't have that kind of money, often what I'll do is I will go to eBay. And mind you, if you're searching for wigs on eBay, everybody uses the same picture. So what I do instead is I tend to look for how, what, rating the seller has, Mm -hmm. how fast the wig is going to get to me. It usually ships from China. I'm always very suspicious of wigs from the USA, actually. But um, the seller's rating, how many times, you know, the seller has sold stuff and gotten feedback, because there are people who have a thousand feedback Mm -hmm. things and, you know, a hundred thousand feedback things. And usually the top rated sellers will be the ones you want to buy from Mm -hmm. and again i've had hits i've had misses i've had pretty good luck but when you're shopping on ebay it's all about looking through pages and pages and making sure that you have the confidence in buying something but i've got wigs on there for five bucks before yeah and they've turned out great I've I've actually gotten a, a special black and blue wig um, uh, that actually came from Japan, and and what it came with it was like a bunch of cute anime stickers and stuff like that. Aww. But it was a really well done wig. Wait wait I, wait, I wait, wait, wait 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 wait. What? what? Screwball. Yeah. You just said you bought a black and blue wig. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. What? Uh huh. For what? Is, 
I'm, I'm trying to think what, what it is that you're refer- I, I don't see the channel right now, so if you're hinting for, something, for, I can't see it. No. I, what, what did you buy it for? What did you Why? buy it for? Why did you buy a black and blue? Oh, that was for the uh, Good King Somber cosplay. Oh, okay. That was, oh, I was like, oh, okay. okay. Or, and just to finish up answering that other question, um, for instance, the Sunset Shimmer wig. I've got a ton of questions. Yes. People asking me where I got that wig. Yes. That wig is from Arda Wigs. It's the candy striper style in the color scheme Phoenix. Also, uh-huh. my vinyl wig that we saw with the base cannons and all that is also the candy striper style in dubstep, actually. <laughs> and though that one I did cut and style myself as well as sew in some extra wefting to make it look a little bit more stripy. So that one took some extra work, but. That Arda wigs is really good quality. They are more expensive than eBay, mm-hmm. but that is usually where most of my m- highly praised wigs come from because people think that they look like my real hair, and that's fine with me, especially when I'm having a bad hair day. I could just pop one of those on. <laughs> there you go. I'll, I'll get the link from her, and I'll put it in the YouTube upload. Even those oh, yeah. uh, like hair extensions and stuff like that, you can get some cool colored ones that you can put into your own hair if you don't want to Oh, you know, yeah. Dye Thanks, Red Card, that for that link. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Beep beep boop. Uh, ooh. Uh, so this is from Trailblaze, uh, which, by the way, has knocked the park with a lot of good questions. So you might be hearing <laughs> a lot from him. But uh, okay. Uh, to Blue, what advice would you give to a guy cosplaying, or sorry, cross-playing? Cross-playing. Like- oh, cross-play. Okay. Um, cross-play is a fun thing. My very first cosplay was actually cross-play. I cross-played as um, Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh-huh. And nice. I had a lot of 13-year-old girls hit on me that day. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that aside, um, let's see. First of all, the biggest number one thing is just own it. Yeah. Because you know what? Own you it. might not be the most feminine person out there. You might not be the most masculine person out there for girls or whatever, yeah. but you know what? Mm-hmm. If you, and this, this is for everything. This, yeah. this extends from crossplay to everything I do. It is all about the attitude because if you are having fun, if you are doing well, like well in the head, obviously, and you are just doing what you love yes. and you're having fun doing it, whatever. You know what? You're doing your best. Mm-hmm. And that's what counts. Yes. But um, uh, other tips. Like, and I'm pretty sure you probably want just some general stuff. Um, I would definitely start looking into foundation. Foundation is a wonderful thing. Shaving is also a wonderful thing. If you don't like expensive razors, I do this thing called the Dollar Shave Club, and I get the $6 one every month, and man, is that cheap, and they come every month, and I can change my razor all the time. Even if you don't want to shave your legs or your face or whatever, if you're just shaving, like, you know, your face, great stuff. But, you know, basically, ladies have smooth skin. So if you want to look like you have smooth skin, foundation shaving, moisturizer, that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, I don't know. Ask your local lady friends or yes. me or somebody about makeup because makeup can do wonders. I'm not even joking. I, I, I don't think I don't think enough makeup comes for me. I don't think I, I don't think there's enough makeup in the world yeah, well, for me. <laughs> well, you know what? You could do it anyway just because you're you. Yeah, true. You would be the, you could be like this big Bulgarian lady or something. Just, <laughs> Ulga, da, darling. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I would show up in like a, a, uh, a, a, a Russian um, gymnastics costume. You know, ladies gymnastics. Oh, yeah. Just walk in, walk in like I own the place. Ja. <laughs> ja. I do, I do one even bars. <laughs> I think it'd be escorted by security. <laughs> well, but yeah. But that's, that's what that's so... what we were talking about earlier. People is using your body as right. in, in cosplay, right? Well, and you it... wouldn't want me playing Sailor Moon. 
Well, but I you know, would, I, but that's I, just my opinion. You know what? I'd play a <laughs> hell of a Sailor Mercury. Dude, nice. But yeah. the other thing, too, is don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Yeah, don't do Because yeah. if you're not comfortable with it, even you're if you're trying super hard, it still shows. Yeah. Just body language, how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You can try so hard to cover it up, but it, even when, when I'm not having fun, yeah. it still seeps through. Even if I'm doing like one of my favorite costumes, yeah. I, it shows through and people are like, oh no, blue sad. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not. Ah. <laughs> and, and, and guys, I went up on stage at BabsCon wearing these, right? Which are my wrestling trunks. I went up on stage wearing these and owned it. Oh, he was and it so was, fabulous. And it was, at, tell him, Blue, tell him how fabulous oh, I was in these. Oh, my God. So right. he struts through the door, just sashays up to the stage, the streamers flapping in the wind, and he gets up there, and he just bends over for the audience, and it was a glorious yes. sound of the rousingest cheer <gasps> I ever heard, and it was great. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It was this rousing cheer for my ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was awesome. But you got you got to own it. It's like I'm going up there yeah. as a professional wrestler, which means I got to have the attitude of a professional wrestler. So I go up there and I own it and I tell off my opponent and have a good jibe at him and we go up there and we have a great time. But if, if you're going to do a character, own it. Figure out Star. what it is and, and do it your way and have a great time doing it. Yes. That, that's Next probably 95% of cosplay. Next uh, this one is from Scotty. Uh, question ah, Scotty. is, uh, which was the hardest cosplay to make? Oh. <laughs> now I have to think of all the costumes I've made. Um, my default answer would be to say rarity because I did make that entire oh, yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. However, um... That award might actually have to go to Vinyl Scratch because of the base cannons. But then again, I'm still not really sure. Like, I never really think of them as hard to make. I just think of it as doing it, mm -hmm. and then it's done, done, and then I move on. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I really don't <laughs> know. Like, none of them really popping into my mind. Probably rarity, though, because I actually had never sewn a piece of clothing before. That was my first thing I ever made. Mm -hmm. oh, and it nice. turned out okay. But, oh man, was that a, was that a time. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> this is from Flutterbean. To, to you, Dusty. Yes. Why are you not in cosplay right now? I am in cosplay. He is. You see me? I am, I am in my Commander Easy Glider hat. I have my... Wonderbolt's polo on. So therefore, yeah. I am a Commander Easy Glider on an off day. It's, it's a casual cosplay. It's a casual hey, cosplay. Do you know why I made my Sunset Shimmer jammies? Well, one, because I love that character. Yes. And two, because I could sleep in them. Yes. And eat <laughs> cereal and watch My Little Pony in them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're so comfy. So if I am feeling awful and under the weather after waking up at 9 a.m. to go to the next day of con, I... Stick that on, and I go grab a piece, a piece of coffee, a cup of coffee, a piece of coffee. <laughs> cup of that's all he's gonna have. But gonna have a piece of coffee. That's what I'm calling it, cause yep. I'm tired. But I walk around, and people are like, "Wow, you're so in character," and I'm just like, la, la, la. Yep. <laughs> "It's great." And there she is, right there in her, in her Christmas picture of in her, her sunset shimmer jammies. Jammies. I remember that. Yes, that was awesome. wonderful picture. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing casual right now. So basically, mm -hmm. this is this is Easy Glider on his off day. So therefore, the he doesn't he doesn't have to be a commander right now. He's just he's just taking care of the show. And right. and if you know one if any of the Wonder Bolts needs him, he has his phone right there. It's his off day. I think my next favorite comfy cosplay I'm going to do is Gamer Luna because oh, I'm all about Gamer Luna. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. You have to wear like a pair of like razor headsets with with uh, with the with the mic and everything. You have to look I, so gamer. <laughs> I want to get one. I don't know if I will be able to in time. I might wear it at Everfree if I can get most of the pieces, but oh wait a minute. You can probably I could get just like take a 20 Sex Bronies headset. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes. There you go. I'm just going to borrow my friend's stuff to 
make my cosplay because that's totally okay as long as they say it's okay. Yes. But you know. Yeah. Yes. Hey, you, can also, you can also just get like a $20 pair of turtle beaches at your local Best Buy you know or what? something. You know what? No, because if I'm going to buy something for my cosplay, I want to be able to use it in real life. That's mm -hmm. one of the great things about cosplay. Absolutely. Like my, um, the headphones mm -hmm. that I got for uh, Vinyl Scratch. I've been wanting those for five years, and I just bit the bullet and bought them because they're awesome, and I can use them in real life, and yeah. I can use them for cosplay, and everything thing is a cosplay thing if you try hard enough. <laughs> yep, that's like my bomber jacket. That's a one one of a kind bomber jacket. I'll, I'll be able to wear all of my life. And oh yeah, that's it, it, actually it's perfect. I can wear it anywhere. That's exactly like me. Um, when I got the uh, Delson Rowe cosplay from Infamous Second Son, uh, they uh, they had a custom suit it to me. And it's probably the most comfortable sweater that I've ever had in my life. And I wear it whenever I go out jogging or, mm -hmm. or biking or anything. It's just the best. <laughs> Next. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I'm reading. That's okay. I'll make silly voices until you're back. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, okay, so this one is from uh, Marby Z. Uh, question for you, Blue. Uh, what conventions, if any, will you be attending this year? Okay, so here is my current convention list. Mind you, these are subject to change. If my funds are not funding and if jobs are jobbing, we'll see. But I should be, well, I've been at BabsCon. Mm -hmm. um, I will be at Midwest Brony Fest. Oh my gosh, this weekend. I will be at Everfree Northwest. Oh my gosh, next weekend. Yeah. Um, unlike what you might have heard from me way earlier, I will not actually be attending um, Crystal Mountain Pony Con. I do not have the money to make it out for that, so I had to step down from that. I will be at BronyCon, and you will see me there being one of their mascots' main event, and that's going to be really fun. I will also be at Brony Can because that's just four hours north of me, and yeah. it's actually a really fun drive. All my friends go up there every year. Um, other than that, I have nothing planned, though if cons want to bring me in as a guest, I will try my asbestos to be there. Mm -hmm. And I do kind of want to go to a con in October or November, but we'll see where I am when we get there because that's still like many months many, away. Many, many, many <laughs> months away. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I highly suggest Nightmare Night. Okay. I'll look into that. Wonderful show. Ah, uh, let's see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this one is from uh, Trailblaze to Blue. Is there a costume you want to do but have been putting off? <laughs> um, yes, actually. Uh, I think I'm saving this one for next September, October. Last September, October. Um, I was working on a Barbarian Berry Punch, and Ooh. I <laughs> have got that half done, but I've lost one of the socks, no. and I don't have the jacket done yet, or the vest, and also <laughs> my uh, school outfit Sonata is still not done. Mm. School outfit. I'm that so sorry. So awesome. <laughs> I, I swear I'll get it done eventually, but Please it's do. just not happening right now. I need to get a job first. Jobs. Uh, Jobs are good. Oh, I'm Jobs on the same really boat. Remember, remember yeah. what we talked about? Money and time and... Yeah. 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 You can't do cosplay if you have no money or no time. I've had a lot of people so. suggest to me that I do a Patreon, and yeah. I'm actually looking into that. I won't be doing any, like, reward to this goal or whatever, because honestly, this is a hobby for me, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it. And if people want to send me money in support because they like what I do, that's great. I don't want to ask for their money and not be able to deliver. I want it to be out of generosity, mm -hmm. not out of obligation, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So that might open up in a bit, especially because I've been jobless for like, you know, a couple of months now. And yeah. most of my fans have seen my content go down the drain mm -hmm. because there is none. Ugh, I'm so mad. That's what happens. But, you know, hey, money. Hey, you money. need it to do hobbies and stuff. But, hey, yeah. I do this for fun, and I'm... Yep. Believe me, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one is from... Yes. Let's see, I'm making sure... I'm just... Jeez, I'm such a slow reader today. It's this it's heat. It's okay. It's, it's okay. this heat. Believe the, in you. the stress. <laughs> no. Believe in the blue that believes in you. I believe. 
Um, yes. Let's see. Uh, so this one is from uh, Trailblaze to all. What are some of your favorite cosplays you've seen at conventions? Mm. Oh. What stands out? Let's see. Well, I, I, I would say at BabsCon was the Sombra Chrissy cosplay couple. Because that yeah, was, that was good. Really wow. Cool. I actually good. sat in front of them wow. right before the contest. Yeah. And I was just looking at them. And oh my gosh, they were spot on. They were spot on. And the horns glowed together. And they had glow rods to the horns. and all. Kind of, oh my <laughs> god, they were so good. So good. Let's see. Trying to think of through all of the cosplay contests that I've hosted at Everfree Northwest. Because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of cosplay. Yeah. Ugh. Um, was, you know what? Uh, One of my favorites, and I know that this was probably like either bought or commissioned or something, but it was one of the first ones that I saw in the Pony fandom. It was the very first Everfree Northwest cosplay contest. This family had a little three-year-old boy, mm -hmm. and they dressed yeah, him up that. in like little, little Oshkosh, Oshkosh overalls yeah. as Soren. As Soren, yeah. And I swear my heart just uh yeah. and then the next year the next year they came back and he was dressed up again and they had another baby and i got so excited to see them that i screamed in the baby's face and made it cry oh no <laughs> but, there you go uh, i don't know i like all the cosplay yes. especially because i see it and i see people and they're having fun and mm -hmm. that makes me so happy yes I don't care. I don't care. You know, if your cosplay looks like you spent five bucks on it or five thousand bucks on it. If you're having a good time, then all's good. Yeah. <laughs> there was one cosplay scene of a seven foot um, uh, predator. Ooh, oh my goodness! Wow. And wow, it was like show quality. Freaked me out. I wanted to run away, sort of thing. It was amazing. Gain a, a selfie with him was hilarious because I wasn't even like getting up to like his elbow. He was so tall. <laughs> wow. I couldn't even believe it. It was so well done. He must wow. have been on stilts a really, really tall guy. I have no idea. Crazy. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, so, ooh, Oops. assistance from Marby Z. A question for Blue. How many hours do you average in creating cosplays? Well, ooh. that depends because my average is really skewed. For instance, um, my most recent vinyl scratch probably took me a couple of months just because of trying to make the cosplay, not having time to, having too much time to, but putting it off, etc., etc. Or there's my new music video Sunset Shimmer cosplay, which took me a day because everything was in my closet already because mm -hmm. I swear that that character designer person stalks my closet but that's okay with me because hey Sunset Shimmer is awesome mm -hmm. anyway um actually it really depends on how much effort I want to put into the character because if I want to make this the best thing ever I will take a lot more time looking for stuff planning it out drawing out outfits thinking of different ways I could do the character etc but if I'm just kind of having fun mm -hmm. or doing a race even, um, then I will probably not put a lot of time into it as I'm sure some people could have seen with my uh, Sunset Shimmer music video one, which was fun. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Though, unless she has that outfit and more things, I don't know how long that one's going to run for because the paint is already peeling off because oh. I prioritize time over quality. Uh, yes. So, you know, it really depends. Mm -hmm. well, Nukes! That, that, that's like, I'll, I'll just <laughs> poke in with me. I had to do Randy Macho Man Savage and I had to do Easy Glider oh, that's right. at the same time. Yeah, you were telling me all about because it. You're like, I, I did had, this one and this I had, one. Yeah, uh. the, the Savage, I, I was bouncing back and forth between the two because if I found something for Easy Glider, I would work on it or I would commission it and then I'd go back working on on the Rainy Macho Man Savage because the jacket mm -hmm. took a good long time because of cutting mm -hmm. out the leather and, and sewing it and figuring out a way to make the streamers work and all that stuff. So the jacket took probably a month, whereas with Easy Glider, a lot of that stuff was wait for stuff to come in and then get the jacket sewn and then, you know, make sure I could get everything um, yeah. in time. And on top of that, I had to lose the weight to get into him. Because hey, there's I, that third resource. There's body. a third resource, the body, because I was not going to do him at 
278 pounds. Well, you could, which but I you was, didn't want to. I didn't want to. I was 278 pounds at the beginning of January, uh, beginning of December, actually. Mm. And I promised myself that if I did this cosplay, I wouldn't do it unless I was 235 pounds. And I mm. put in the time, the effort, and to get to that weight before BabsCon. It was a, Dude, a great so way to uh, prioritize getting back into shape. And, it was awesome. And it worked. You're done good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You had the motivation. You yeah. did it. Absolutely. Um, next. Mom. Definitely. Uh, let's see here. Assistant from Waveform to all. What are your opinions on fursuiting in the context of cosplay? Love it. I Love think it. it's actually Love kind of its own thing. It, it is. Here, it, it is its own thing. Uh, um, I, you call that mascotting, which is different from mm -hmm. cosplay. Okay. Um, oh. it, it, it's there's there's a gray line there for me because yeah. I came from a fandom where there was a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. But there was also people that did cosplay, also, which was mm -hmm. you know it wasn't total fursuiting, but they wear ears and a tail and, and a and a costume and whatever. But that was, that was called mascotting or mascot yeah. costuming. Yeah, it wasn't That's the called cosplay. Verb. Yeah, mascotting is completely different than, you know, you could put a, say, if somebody did a Twilight Sparkle suit, you know, mascot costume, and then put her skirt and everything on from Rainbow Rocks, then you've got a mascot who's cosplaying. Yep. It's, ah, I see. There's lots of different there's ways lots of different to, ways to you can think do this. about it or approach yeah, you can it. You think about it or approach but it. I think it's, honestly, it's so big and there's so many different ways you can go about doing that mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. stuff that I honestly just consider it its own thing. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, mascotting is, is completely separate from cosplay. It really mm -hmm. is. It's a, it's a completely okay. separate um, set of skills. It's a comp completely separate way of doing costuming. It almost it's has true. nothing to do with cosplay at all whatsoever. Because I've made one of those suits. It's a royal pain in the katishka. It really <laughs> is. But I did it, and I gained those skills to do it, and it was fun to do. But I wouldn't do it again, probably, because it's just way, way pain in the butt to do <laughs> Next. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah. Um, so this is from Hulicious. Uh, qu quick question is... How do you untangle a wig? That stuff does not work well like real hair. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, All yours let's there. Let's see. Okay. Um, well, it depends. Is the wig straight? Is the wig curly? Do you care about it being exactly like it used to be? Because if you do, give up. Um, <laughs> well, you don't have to. You can try really hard. I don't try really hard because... I usually just like to do something with it that isn't try really hard because mm -hmm. I don't have the patience for that most of the time. But um, what I have done to detangle and clean wigs in the past is I will clean them by putting the wig into warm water with some wig shampoo and just kind of letting it sit there for a bit. Put some wig conditioner in it and brush it out while it's still wet. Lay it out flat to dry on a towel and then it's pretty good. That's what I did with my Sunset Shimmer wig. Um, and it also really depends on the quality of your wig, too. Some wigs are not good quality. And it's probably better to just get a new one mm -hmm. or deal with it or I don't even know, use it for scrap or something yeah. than to try and fix it. Because, you know, it depends on the wig. Mm -hmm. And then if it's curly, you want to lay it out. If it's straight, you can kind of let it hang dry. Or if it's straight, you can... Um, oh, actually, I just thought of something. So, I have this wonderful thing called Motions Oil Sheen. Uh -huh. You can find it in most of the ethnic hair care products in your local grocery place. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not all the places. I actually had some difficulty finding mine, but you can probably find it online. And this stuff I actually will spray on my wigs before I wear them because it keeps them from tangling and it makes it easier to brush. Not a whole lot, but enough. Nice. Especially on curly wigs and straight wigs even more. If you spray it too much on straight wigs, though, it'll get kind of piecey. But I wanted that for my chrysalis wig, so that's what I did. Anyway, um, this stuff, especially with a straight wig, I've sprayed it on a straight wig and just brushed the entire thing out. And it worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. But... 
Oh, curly wigs are the bane of my existence. I should <laughs> yeah. touch my Pinkie Pie, but I have not uh. in the past couple of years, and oh, the poor dear. So, yeah. Really? <laughs> Joe? Really, Joe? Joe? They, what? You're not in Equestria right now, but you, you're you ready. Okay, where are you? You're home. Well, why aren't you in Equestria? Uh, okay, 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 I'll, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll cut to you. Okay. Jill wants me to cut to him now. So we're going to go to EQI. He's not in Equestria for some reason. I don't... Uh, okay, this is Joe. We'll be right back. Equestria Inquirer right. is now. Is now. Thank you, Dusty Cat. I've stepped away from my regular news desk to have a more serious conversation. It's time we talked about bronies. Some people consider bronies to be good. We have charities. We create funny news shows. We foster democratic insurrection in the People's Republic of China. But Xi Jinping was right about at least one thing. Bronies are terrible. And in this new segment, I'll discuss why bronies are terrible. In this instance, we'll highlight the Riviera Hotel and Casino. The Riviera was once home to many acts, such as Elvis Presley and the Rat Pack. Dean Martin even had a controlling share in the casino. And now this historic landmark has been slated for demolition. What does this have to do with bronies? Well, in 2013, bronies held a convention in Las Vegas called Las Pegasus Unicon. The convention ended in disaster, with both the hotel and VIP guests not being paid. And what hotel was this? The Riviera. Coincidence? No. Do you think Elvis Presley would be a brony? Where is the state of masculinity in America if men who watch a show for little girls are personally responsible for the destruction of a hotel where Dean Martin drank a martini out of Marilyn Monroe's belly button? Where is the outrage? Where are the riots? The heritage of men like Dean Martin lies dead beneath the dancing feet of a Pinkie Pie cosplayer singing the Smile Song. And no, it's not ludicrous to say that Las Pegasus Unicon is responsible for the bankruptcy of the Riviera Hotel and Casino. Just like it's not ludicrous to say bronies destroyed the restaurant chain Steak and Ale, or are responsible for the cancellation of the A-10 Warthog, or George R.R. Martin's slow writing of the sixth Song of Ice and Fire book. Why should I continue my fan fiction where Tyrion Lannister shoots down a dragon with uranium depleted bullets fired at 4,000 rounds per minute and finishes the evening with a hearty red meat and beer dinner when bronies will just destroy anything of value a man produces? Las Vegas authorities have announced they will build a new casino which will feature dancing naked women, grotesque amounts of alcohol, gambling, an interactive exhibit where you can punch a giraffe, and a buffet made up of meats from endangered species. All of these were available at the Riviera, of course, but it just won't be the same. And that's why bronies are terrible. Back to you, Dusty Cat. Wow. Okay. Really, Joe? You had to go off that hard? Oh, God. Dang. He that meant. I don't know you anymore. the best. <laughs> Uh, d Eric? Trust, trust me, people. I'll talk Joe down from the edge. He'll, he'll be back next show. Trust me. I'll talk him back from the edge. Crossing my toes for you. Don't worry. <laughs> about it. Don't worry. Me and Joe are like this. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. All right. All right. Okay. So okay. yeah, we're back with the uh, fabulous blue. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. <laughs> and we got more talking about costuming to do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Cool. Screwball. Talk to me about it. Oh, I'm talking. Yes. I'm talking. Wow, I listen got to that beautiful voice. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, uh, for fudge cakes, I am so slow today. Oh. Fudge cakes. Yes. Fudge cakes. Um, sorry, I'm just reading really slow. That's what happens. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna bring this one because I like it. Uh, this is from okay. Snow Blitz. For Snowy. all, what cosplay would you like to make that's outside of the pony fandom? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Outside the pony fandom. What do you think, Blue? Well, actually, a um, show that I've been really wanting to cosplay from uh, is Steven Universe, actually. Oh. I really like that show. It's a it's fun good. show. Yes. And the problem is, I am of the opinion that 
they have yet to introduce a character that I need to cosplay. Mm-hmm. I usually will cosplay a character because I have some sort of internal inspiration and or mighty need <laughs> to cosplay. So I've been watching diligently since it, you know, kind of, well, not since it came out, but I don't know, season two, whatever. And I still have yet to see a character that I just go, that one. I think so, you pull off a really good pearl. Why does everybody say pearl? I'm too curvy for pearl. No, do you I look like I, I have a stick you, up my butt? <laughs> I think you do a really good pearl. Believe me, get 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 her her sword and that and that outfit and the wig oh and her. Goodness. Oh, you do really well with pearl. I think so. I here's the other thing too. I will usually take my costumes really seriously because as much as I cosplay for myself, mm-hmm. I also cosplay for other people. And although it might be fun to do Pearl, I don't think I could pull her off as well as a gem that hasn't been introduced yet. I don't know which one it's going to be, but I kind of hope it's one of the diamond ones because that's my birthstone. Yeah, you, <laughs> but, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Though a lot of people have also said that I would do a good Lapis Lazuli but her personality doesn't really jive with me, yeah, so she's, I don't know. She's something else. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and hold on that one, but you mm-hmm. know I'm not sure yet. Like, and also as I said before, I do want to do a uh, humanized King Boo. Mm-hmm. Um, I also would like to do a couple of um, humanized Pokemon one like cosplays, but I have yet to decide what to do for that. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. What about you, Dusty? Well, for me, I'm I'm old school anime, right? I, I, I was into anime before anybody... It was even called that. It was just basically redubbed into English Japanese animation. Um, when I was a kid, I really, really, really wanted to do a costume of Joe the Condor from Science mm-hmm. and Team Gatchaman. Um, yeah. A lot of people probably even know who the character is. But he it was, he was this wonderful hot headed character, and he he what he did he he had these little feathers which had a dart on him. He could put uh, he throw these feathers and they, things would explode. It was great, and he was, <laughs> he was a, a custom marksman, and he drew ah. he, he drove this you know sports car which split in the middle and had a, a gun in the center of it, and he shoot stuff. It was great. That's what I wanted to be as a kid. But as I've gotten older, um, Cowboy Bebop, okay. Um, if I, I, I don't know if I'm remembering uh, the character's name, but the, the guy who owns the ship, Jet, I think is his name. Um, the guy with the robotic names. right arm. Yes. Yes. I wanted, I want to play him, but I need to put the body back in shape first because he's like, he's pretty muscular. And if I get my arm back to being as big as it used to be, then I could like spray paint it silver and put robotic stuff on it and <laughs> do him. Jet, I, Jet Black. Yeah, I would love to do that character. That would be awesome. Can you see me walking into an anime convention with that? That would be awesome. I, That'd be right. My honest fave would, it would cost thousands, oh, literally. Thousands yeah. uh, Isaac Clarke from Dead Space, by mm-hmm. far. Just the, his, it's basically a, uh, a, a distant cousin of Iron Man is how to best describe it. <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, you can tell from the game that they clearly uh, have an Iron Man appeal about him, but his helmet's so much cooler. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely Dead, dead Space, Isaac Clark. He's just, he's too pretty to, to pass now. He's, pretty. he's too pretty. He's too pretty. Nice. Um, next. So next. Uh, next. Oh, jeez. So this is from Flare Cobra to you, Blue. Have you ever had a cosplay accident that later you, uh, later on you, uh, uh, you could laugh about? Oh, <laughs> accidents. Yeah. Well, there was uh, my very first uh, final scratch. Um, I was actually very glad that it didn't turn out worse. I had my tail pinned and sewn into the back of my pants. Mm-hmm. I knelt down. My oh, no. friend stepped on my tail. Oh. I stood up. Oh. My tail went. Thankfully, my pants did not. Oh. That was so scary. And then Mike the microphone 
burst out of the doors and acted like he owned the place, and I went, what the heck is this fandom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Though, cosplay malfunctions, um, you know, all I can say is, you know, just just pay attention to what underwear you're wearing. <coughs> like, really, because some underwear will show through will? your costume. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and also lines will show through your costume, and you know, just be aware. I've never had big costuming accidents, yeah. just little minor ones that I didn't know were happening until like an hour later and somebody decided to tell me after I got off stage. <sighs> so, you know, just, just stuff like that. Just, you know, calming waves. <laughs> <laughs> calming waves. Don't meet with those negative waves so early in the morning. Next. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of cosplays of her. A lot. A lot. Yes. I, I, I guess I, I there's going to be a ton of cosplays of I, her. I, I swear someone's going to bring in yeah. a tree as well or yeah. something. Someone's going to bring a big foam tree and she's going to be hugging it walking <laughs> oh, around. no. I can see it. <laughs> Someone dressed as a tree and she just is constantly so, somebody it. made a Somebody made a stuffed animal of her within like eight hours of the show. Yeah, people uh, are insane. Yeah. People act fast. They do. Too fast. Next. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Wow, was, I just realized what I was doing there. No. <laughs> this one's from, uh, uh, ooh, so this one is from uh, EQF uh, Azrael. Uh, the question is, is there a place or website where I can order a custom-made outfit? Ooh. Um, um, probably from Japan. Yeah, definitely from Japan. From that's Japan. that's where I got my Delson one, and fine. they do a really good job. You should definitely link that because I actually don't know anything about getting custom made stuff because I usually do it all myself or I know people who do. <laughs> do. Well, screw it, screw it. You got you got the uh, Assassin's Creed outfit. Yeah, uh, that one was American, but uh, that one, that one. Oh my goodness, I have to find the link to that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's it's called Medieval Collectibles. Okay. They make very good cosplays. It's a little pricey, I will admit, <laughs> mm -hmm. but boy, is it worth it. it. Mainly, it's all medieval stuff from like generic, oh. uh, generic like um uh, like suits of armor mm -hmm. that sort of thing, which is mainly for those role playing. Yep kind of ones, but then they can get some really serious ones like yeah. to Game of Thrones, to uh, Assassin's Creed, which is where I got it from, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And and they have some really nice suits of armor from there. I've shopped with them numerous times because nice. they get it done very well and very quick, too. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, Scurry, you know what time it is? What time is it? No, it's not that. Oh, it, that it, it is that time. It's that time. We're what time? near the end of the show. 6.30. It's 6.30. So, this is the time is when the time. our guest gets yeah. to ask me and Screwball a question. What? You didn't tell me about now, this. That, we're not supposed to tell you about that because it's a oh. surprise! Oh, I'm so surprised! Yes! Oh, my goodness. Yes. Okay, let's see. I will think of a question for both of you. Um, yes. Hmm... You know, this is like my worst subject in school. Is it? Right before geometry is yes. asking questions. Pop um, quiz! Yes. Oh, no! <sighs> what, what, what is the point of this? Are you supposed to see how well I could come up with a question? Because I don't even... Um, um, oh, um, no, wait. Um, how about you guys? What, um, what conventions are you going to be at this year so I know when we can hug and have tea? Because ah. I want to <laughs> hug and have tea. Okay, well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be at Everfree Northwest. Well, good. First, we'll hug and have tea there. Yes. Um, if I bring Easy Glider, we'll have photos and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, um, then my next one is Bronikan. Bronikan, yes. Yes, Bronikan. good. And then um, I'm going to try to make Equestria LA, because I've made every one, and I want to go to Equestria LA again. Oh, boy, so, do I. So uh, those are... I want to go to Equestria LA, yes. but I'm working that weekend. Uh, <sighs> yes, but those are the three. That I'm I'm slated for. Yeah. Uh, for me, hoping just really hoping for every Northwest. Uh, 
I think what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to buy the bus tickets anyway. Mm -hmm. And if why can't why can't you works, get a ride down with somebody? Oh, it, it, it's 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 not it's, it's just you never know, it's uh, I have I have I'm 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 wondering if I'm getting that job or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If oh. I get the job, I can't go. If yeah. I don't get the job, I can go. Gotcha. Though, oh, but I was talking with the the job people, mm -hmm. and and they're thinking about maybe making the training um, not till early early June. Oh, so cool. maybe I might be able to make it. So I'm just gonna buy the bus ticket, and if it doesn't work out, whatevs. Whatevs. Though that though That's that is a, that is a good idea. I could I could drive with someone, yeah. but I don't know. I feel very awkward about talking to one of the voice actors about that. Like, there's Aww. a few of them that are my friends, Aww. but yes. the, but the ones I know really close yeah. aren't going. Oh, darn. Oh. Yeah, there's got to be, like, a fans up there going down or something like that. But we'll figure it out later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, with that, we're at the end the of end. the program. Yeah. So, I want yeah. to remind everybody that, hey, you know what? We still have a t-shirt out there. Stay Brony My Friends t-shirt. Here is the logo. This was done by our wonderful Sabrina. Sipsy, ah. who oh, does Sipsy. yes storyboard artist for our favorite for show. In fact, she she's responsible for giving you all the funny jokes in last week's episode because she <laughs> did the work on that one. She's she's been hyping it yes, for so hype, long. Hype, hype. She <laughs> loved that loved that episode. So if you want a t-shirt, a hoodie, anything, go to redbubble.com. I'll put in one word: stay brony. That's stay brony, and you'll find all of the designs that this was done, that Trisha's done, all people have done. Every time we get something new, we'll put it up there. But this is the one that's going right now. That's our T-shirt. Hopefully, yeah. you pick one up and fly it at the conventions. We'd love to see you out there at the conventions yes. wearing that. Yeah. And also, thanks our sponsor, Little's Toy Company. Little's Toy Thank Company. You. If you need yeah. Funkos, if you need anything, if you need to lunch boxes, go to Little's Toy Company on the web, and they have it for you. Thank you very much, Little's Toy Company, for Yay. supporting and sponsoring us. Um, thank yous go out to Blue, of course. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Screwy okay. for doing everything. Else. Oh, okay. Yay, Screwy! My wonderful girlfriend Amy, <laughs> Lance Bubula, and Nathan for cutting all all the names so we could draw one tonight. Uh, Ray, Bash Nathan. script and everyone busting their blanks over on Canterlot Hill. Thank you very much for doing what you do and giving us a place to do this wonderful program. Um, oh. Everybody working on My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. Everybody. Absolutely. The Korean people who animate it, the people who do it up there in Vancouver, the voice actors, Tara Strong, everybody. Thank you very much yep. for doing what you do and giving mm -hmm. us uh, something to, to crush on because we love it. Um, Yay. And you, out there, who come every time we turn that camera on and make dang fools out of ourselves every time. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for coming and watching me be a fool. Mm-hmm. Blue says it's true. Blue says it's true. Must be true. <laughs> um, and with that... Next show is the Monday after Everfree Northwest. <gasps> I'm going to be on a plane. Mm. I get in, I think, around 5 o'clock. Oh. oh. Our time. So shall it be late it, or not at all? It either will not be or <laughs> if I feel like throwing everything up, we're going to have an Everfree, ne Everfree Northwest after party. Dude. So... I want a party. So I'll just put turn on Skype. If, if, if it happens, I'll turn on Skype and just find anybody who's sitting there on Skype and just pull them into a call and we'll talk about it for Free Northwest and, and whatever. Maybe Blue will come back. Dude, I will totally come back there we go. because, hey, Blue I will drive like 20 minutes yeah, and then I'm Blue home. Blue can come back <laughs> and then we'll see. And I'll Skype and get anybody else up at Ever Free Northwest to call in. So it might be a late show if I get in and we can set everything up real quick. Then we'll have a late show. Um, Dude, we should next totally show. have the late late show. Well, let's yes. do that. you know what? Let's do that. We're gonna do the late late show. Yep. So I'm gonna fly back late, in late on show Monday. With we're gonna do a late late oh. show with Dusty Cat. In fact, you know what we're gonna do? Because it's a late show, we're gonna what? have a top ten list because this is the final week of David Letterman. Oh, sweet. It is well, the, the final let's week of David Letterman, and I will say right now, Dave, I wouldn't be doing this without you because you know you're my waifu. I love oh. watching your show, and you're my guy. And, I'm going to cry, and I'm not choking you know, on tea. I know. So next next show, <laughs> next show we're going to have a top ten list. Next show, we're going to go late. So, you know, as we get closer to it, I'll tell you exactly when we're going to get started and what's going on with that, but I'll be in the air, and I'll come back here, and I'll set everything up, and we'll do it. All right. We'll do it. Okay? Sounds like a plan. And then the show after that one is the show after My Little Pony, episode 100. 
Oh. Ukulele dubstep. Ukulele dubstep. It is going to be <laughs> guess who our guest is that time, Screwball. Who, it who? is none other, other than Lee Tokar. Lee Tokar. Dude. The man himself is back. Lee is going to be nice. back a month from today. So <gasps> I'm excited. I'm excited for, too. For I'm reasons too. we can't say. For reasons we can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. So with that, we're out of here. Thank you all, all for right. coming. Bye. And bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Du, 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 du. Good, Good night, night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.